Man, you look so official there. Ah, yeah. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. You look way too tan for being stuck inside. It's the lighting. It's all it is. This is Richard Neal. I take it we aren't starting right this instant because I'm doing important things like pouring a beer. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. And Richard? Do you mind if I go upstairs out on the helipad? It seems a little bit more pleasant. Is taking social distancing to the extreme. Where are you right now? I am 32 miles to the southeast of Wilmington, North Carolina. So are you in North Carolina right now? Technically, I'm not in America. Okay, time out for context. Richard is here, technically in international waters, on this thing. It has a name, Frying Pan Tower. Sits at the end of Frying Pan Shoals. Now, back in the day, ships used to run aground on the shoals, so the Coast Guard put a light ship out at the end. Then, in the 1960s, they built this lighthouse. But, you know, ships really don't rely on lighthouses anymore, so eventually the Coast Guard just abandoned it. And it looked like this. Cruise rec room. Until 2010. So, as a kid, I read comic books, and in the back of the comic books, it would say things like, you know, get a government Jeep for $5. And so I had this bright idea of, of looking for how do I find these government auction things? One of the things that popped up was this strange looking big metal box on legs out in the middle of the ocean. And so I put a bid on it, not knowing anything about it other than the fact that I was thinking, well, that was kind of fun. Um, my bid turned out to be the only one in this case. And so I got a phone call saying, you won, what are you gonna do? Yeah, what exactly do you do with an old Coast Guard light station? Well, you fix it up. So what once looked like this, now looks like this. All right, uh, so can you give me a, a quick tour? Yeah, I'd love to. So one of the things we inherited was this lovely stainless steel kitchen that allows us to do everything from get a cup of coffee to grow our plants. And the room I'm in right now has several of the flags that have flown over the years out here. Every morning we take a step out, see what's going on. You can hear all the royal turns are down there just carrying on. They've all moved back in. They were gone until just a few weeks ago, and they're noisy, but it's kind of like, you know, they came back to visit, which I love. All the power that you have, you'll notice, other than the birds, you don't hear any real noise. That's because we're doing solar and storing it all in our battery bank. So that's how the lights are on, literally. We run around in our jet ski, and right now we're working on repainting our underwater camera mounts. Richard has done everything out there, from riding out hurricanes, to ordering pizza. Domino's! Woohoo! Domino's pizza delivered! He also installed web cameras on the tower. During Hurricane Florence, live video of an American flag flapping in the wind appeared on newscasts around the world. A few years ago, I went out to the tower myself to have a look and self-promotion here, record a podcast episode. It was a really special trip for me. But Richard, for him, the tower is kind of like a second home. Good morning. Here we are again. Every time Richard goes out on the tower, he posts videos to the internet more often than a teenager. Get a little fuel in this, this will help. And that's how I found out that while a lot of us are self-distancing six feet apart, he's self-distancing 32 miles apart. And you know what he's doing out there? Working. 7.35, time to get ready to work by eight. The regular nine to five job, which by the way, I'm doing remotely right here. Yeah, how do you get internet out there? Well, we engineered with some really smart people this big old dish behind me that shoots a signal to shore way off that way, 56 miles to a TV station. And it's fast. Oh yeah, yeah, it's better than my house, <laughs> back on shore. How did you get out there? Like, like, how did you get out there for this trip? Well, there's only two ways out to the tower, and one of them's uh, by boat or by helicopter. And in this case, I put a posting out there just on Facebook to our friends saying, anybody feel like 
going our way and uh, I'll be darned. I uh, got a ping from a professional certified captain. Being a commercial fisherman, he was allowed to actually depart during this time. Jumped on his boat, paid for his fuel, and uh, next thing I know, an hour and a half later, climbing up the leg and offloading supplies and getting ready to get started working. Uh, this is, uh, I guess you would say, my form of self-isolation. What does it mean for you to be isolated? Like, what is the meaning of that for you? Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. Um, the longest I've been here is six months uh, at a stretch um, with just wow. one trip to, to shore. And the thing that it really taught me is that, you know, we are creatures that love to communicate. So if I had been here for even a week and had no email, no internet, no marine band radio, I might have gotten a little bit nuts. Um, but thank God, you know, when you reach out and you call that family member that you haven't talked to but once at a funeral or at a Christmas vacation or whatever, it really makes you realize you might not have that ability to do it. Do it now. You know, call your dad, call your mom, call your brother, call that aunt that bugs you, you know, whatever. So it's really important to value our relationships because when you don't have them and you are out here all by yourself, if I was to drop this phone in the ocean or the internet would die, hmm. I would be very eager to get on a boat to get back to shore. Mm. So, Richard, thank you, man. Stay, uh, keep on keeping on. We will. Wish us luck on catching dinner. All right. Take care. Take care now.